All right, guys, in the last video, we set up our server, our Express server. We implemented Express GraphQL. We created a schema file and we brought in everything we need from GraphQL and we exported the schema. Now, we're getting an error down here saying that the schema query must be an object type but got undefined. Now, the object type we need to create is a root query. Okay, so a root query is kind of like the baseline for all other queries and all other object types. So what we'll do is we'll go right above it. We'll go right here and let's say root query. And we're going to create a variable called root query. Okay, we're going to set that to new and then we're going to use this right here, GraphQL object type. Now we're going to create a, uh, a couple object types. Actually, in this project, we're only going to create a customer object type, uh, but you can create as many as you want. Okay, if you're going to have all different types of data, for instance, uh, maybe customers had uh, products or something like that. Um, but you, the, the one that you do need is the root query. Okay, so that's going to be a uh, GraphQL object type that's going to take in an object. So we're going to put our curly braces and all object types need to have a name. This one is going to be root query type. Okay. And then we basically want to we want to be able to query individual customers as well as the entire list of customers. So all customers. So let's go right here and we'll say for the individual customer, we're going to set up this object and we're going to say it's going to have a type of customer type. Okay, now it doesn't know what this is yet. So we're going to go ahead and create a customer type. So let's go right above the root query. We'll say customer type and we're going to create a variable called customer type. Okay, and we're going to again set it to new GraphQL object type just like we did with the root query. Okay. And again, this is going to take in an object with a name. Okay, in this case, it's going to be customer. Now we want to define the fields that we want for a customer. So let's say fields. And we're actually going to set this to an arrow function. Okay, whoop. So we're going to set this to a set of parentheses. And inside here, we want some curly braces. So we're going to set our fields. We want to have an ID. I'm going to set this to be a GraphQL string. So we're going to say type GraphQL string. Okay, now remember, we brought this in up here. You want to bring in any type that you want for your data fields. You want to bring in the type up here. So ID, let's also do a name. Okay, so the name is actually going to be a string as well. So let's say type GraphQL string. Now we're also going to have an email, which will also be a string. So I'm just going to copy that and we'll say email and then we'll have an age. Okay, so the age is actually going to be an integer. So this will be GraphQL int. Okay, remember we brought that in up here. So that's it. That's our customer type. Basically, we're just giving it a name and we're giving it fields. So let's go back down to our root query and now it should know what a customer type is. Now, remember, we can use any kind of data we want, any kind of database. If we wanted to use MongoDB, we could we could install Mongoose and we could make our queries uh, and I'll show you where we would do that. But for now, we're going to just put some hard coded data in here. OK, we're going to work with JSON server later, but for now, let's just put some hard coded data. OK, just so we can see how this works. So what I'll do is just create a variable called customers. And we're going to set that to an array of objects, which will have an ID, which will be a string of one. We'll give it a name of John Doe. Email, say J Doe at Gmail. And then an age, we'll say 35. Oops. Age 35. Okay, age is an integer. That's why we don't have a quotes around it. So let's go ahead and just copy this and then we'll put in two more people here, two more customers. So two and three and we'll just change this up. We'll say Steve Smith, change the email here. We'll say Steve is 25 and then let's make this one. We'll say Sarah uh, Williams, change the email 
and we'll say that Sarah is 32. So now we have our data. Okay, like I said, it doesn't matter where the data comes from at this point. So now let's go down here to our root query and we want to go inside of customer, okay, which has the type of customer type. And then we're going to also give it some args. Okay, so we want to fetch the customer by its ID, right? So we have to specify that here. So ID and we're going to also give this a type. So it's going to be a GraphQL string. And then the next uh, the next value we're going to put here is going to be a resolve function. So we're going to say resolve. And this is going to take in two things. It's going to take in parent value and args. All right. And then here is where we actually want to resolve our response. Now, since we just we're just using hard coded data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through the users or the customers and we're going to find the the customer that has the ID that they're asking for and we're going to return it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just put a for loop. And we're going to say let I equals zero and we'll say as long as I is less than customers, which is the name of our, our array dot length and we want to just increment by one. And then what we'll do is uh, we're going to search for the customer that matches the ID that they asked. Now, when they query it by ID, we can access it through this args. So we can say if customer uh, customers I, so the current iteration that we're going through in the for loop dot ID is equal to args dot ID, okay, which is the ID they're looking for, then we want to just simply return that customer. So return customers I so that current iteration and that's it. Now, later on, when we use JSON server, we're going to have we're going to make an actual request and a, uh, um, a get request to get the customer. But for now, it's just hard coded. So we're going to return it like this. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll go down here to our schema and we're going to put in query and set that to the root query. OK, and that's it. So let's save that and let's try and let's restart this manually. OK, and we're getting an error here. So fields must be an object with field names as keys or a function which returns such an object. All right. So let's see. Uh, fields must be an object. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> this should actually be this customer here. This needs to be wrapped in a fields object. So fields, just like we did here, fields. Uh, so we just need to grab this customer, which ends right here. We'll cut that out and put it inside fields because it's looking for that fields and it's not finding it. Uh, let's see, let's just fix this up. All right, so let's try that. All right, so let's see, we're still getting an error. ID argument must be input type, but got undefined. Uh, let's see, but got undefined. So ID, oh, we've got the type. I'm gonna say type. There we go. All right, so now our server's running. So now hopefully we should be able to access graphical and we should be able to query a customer. So let's go ahead and go to our browser. And what we're going to do to get the graphical is localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. And there we go. So here's our interface. And let me just clear this out. You guys probably won't have that. Okay, so you probably see something like this, which is like a welcome. But we're going to get rid of all these comments and we're going to make a query. Now, remember, the query is very simple. It's actually very close to how the data is formatted. We're going to put some curly braces. Let me just make this bigger. And we're just going to say customer. We want to fetch the customer by its ID. Let's get customer one. And then we have some curly braces and we want to define what we want back from that customer. So let's say we want name, email, and age. Now to run it, you can either press the play button here or you can do uh, control enter. 
and there we go so we get back our data we get back customer name John Doe email and age all right so if we want to get customer two let's go ahead and press play we get Steve Smith three we get Sarah Williams if I try to get four we're gonna get null because we don't have a customer with ID four now we're just dealing with hard-coded data right we're dealing with this right here but like I said you can use anything you want if you wanted to use mongoose if you want I just did a video on using node.js with mysql if you wanted to use the mysql client through node.js you could do that and you could grab your data that way so it's it's really powerful where you can use any uh, you know any stack you want really and of course you're not limited to javascript you can use graphql with python or php or c sharp or, or anything else all right and we're getting specific data because if we want just the name we can just take those out and run it oops let's get id one and now it's just giving us back the name rather than you know with a standard rest api giving us a whole shitload of data that we don't need now another cool thing about graphical is if we look over here we have something called the documentation explorer and it, it shows us uh, uh, basically a map of our data so we have the query right we have a root query type if we click on that it's going to show us that we have a customer field that takes in an id and has the type of customer okay and, and by type i mean this right here okay so our customer type now imagine if you had a, a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different types it would they'd all be listed here and if we click on customer it'll give us a list of arguments so it's a nice little map of your data it doesn't really show us much because we have such a little amount of data but if we had you know customers products um, uh, maybe like product reviews and all types of stuff it would all show here and we'd have a nice little map of the data okay and we can use any kind of uh, any kind of client to access our server we could build a react application using uh, you know Apollo or something like that and uh, we will get into that in another series but this is really powerful it may not seem like it at first but it, it, it really is a powerful technology all right so before we get into mutations and actually changing data on the server and get into you know JSON server I want to make it so that we can get all customers not just an individual so in the root query type fields let's go right after the customer put a comma here and we'll say customers okay we're gonna set that to some curly braces and then give it a type now in this case since we're getting all the customers we want to set it to graphql list okay so we want to set it to graphql list and then we want to put in the type that we're getting which is customer type okay and then we just want our resolve now notice we don't have any args because we don't need any because we're not fetching it by the ID like we are here so resolve is going to take in parent value args and then all we have to do here since we're working with hard-coded data we can just return this okay so we'll go here and we'll say return customers and let's save that and then we should be able to go back to graphical let's clear this out and all we have to do now is say customers uh, yeah customers and then let's say we want the name okay so we'll press play uh, let's see expected name found customers you know what let me restart the server all right let's try that again huh expected name found customers and it, it actually should pop up when I oh there we go customers oh ah, I'm an idiot we didn't need the uh, parentheses we're, we weren't passing in anything any ID or anything so we do actually don't need those parentheses uh, but let's go ahead and also request the name email and you'll see we get these pop-ups these hints telling us the different fields that are actually available so let's get the name and email and there we go so now we can fetch all of the customers 
All right, guys, so that's how we can fetch data. Now, we've been working with hard-coded data, so in the next video, we're going to set up JSON's server so that we can have a more realistic environment because right now, I mean, you're not going to be working with hard-coded data in a real project, okay? So uh, that's what we'll be doing in the next video.